Hey guys, well, I'm here with my daughter, Cassidy, and I'm real fortunate this weekend. Not only is my son home from the Air Force, but my daughter came up from college, took the weekend off or whatever, came up from college so she could see her brother and just so we could all be together as a family and it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so anyway, today um, Cassidy is going to attempt a one fire challenge, one stick fire challenge. And she's going to do it a little bit differently. She's not going to use a, a ferro rod. And uh, we'll get to how she's going to do the source of ignition here in a little bit. But the first thing she needs to do is she needs to harvest a piece of wood. Now it's been, what do you think, it's been raining for about three days now? Yeah, about, yeah, about so three days. We've probably gotten five to six inches of rain in that three days. So, you know, I mean, it's definitely damp out. Sorry about my neighbor, man. He's... That's okay, I mean, they're just building stuff. I have people on both sides of us building stuff. Anyway, it looks like it's gonna be a nice day out today. The sun's starting to kinda of peek from behind the clouds. and So I guess what I was getting at, at about the rain is that you can't just go along and pick something up off the ground that's laying on the ground uh, for this one stick fire challenge for a, uh, you know, to find some dead wood. We need to find some standing dead wood. Now this piece that we're right next to here is a dead, um, we call them popples, but uh, it's a, um, an aspen tree or poplar. Anyway, this looks to me like it's dead. We're going to cut into it and I'm thinking this is definitely going to be big enough. You know, whether or not we get a sustainable fire or not, it's not that big a deal to us. We just want to make sure we get uh, ignition and, you know, we're going to, I'm going to teach her a little bit about feather sticking and just how you have to process everything down fine enough to be able to light it on fire with just using one stick. I mean, there's a lot to, lot to a one stick fire. Anyway, we're gonna try to harvest this piece probably right there, maybe even a little bit smaller. And as long as it's not punky, and as long as it's dead in the middle, we're gonna use this. Otherwise, we've actually got quite a bit of dead stuff behind us too. So all right, let's get going. Okay guys, Cassidy's gonna use a hatchet to get the initial splits of the sticks down so she can do the feather sticking. And what I just explained to her right now was that you know I want her legs to be just open just a little bit like she has them and she's gonna get the hatchet started by just batoning it a little bit and getting it into the meat of the wood just getting it to stick in the wood and then she's going to gently chop lift up the hatchet which the stick will be attached hopefully to the hatchet and just kind of pound it down gently and making sure that the that the handle is in is down at a downward angle more than an upward angle if she has it at an upward angle there's more of a chance of her slipping and swinging that hatchet back towards her she's gonna go super slow so i mean even if she uh, misses or something happens it should she should be able to stop in mid-stroke but anyway with the handle at a downward angle and then chop chop chopping she'll be able to make that that blade go straight down and then bite into the log so go ahead and, and hit that sucker and get it in there. That's okay. There you go. You might have to lift, there you go. Now go ahead and lift it up and down, or you know, like uh, drop it, drop through there. There you go. Perfect. Should I do it for this one too? Yeah, you can do it one more time. Don't, yeah, there you go. Just baton it. That way your hand's not in the way when you're doing that. There you go. Perfect. I think that, uh, yep, I think if you do it one more time. For those ones? No, for, for that piece one? that you got, yep. the hatchet back and we'll put that away. Nice job. It's a big hatchet, big Husqvarna. It's a really heavy hatchet. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to process these little sticks down into feather sticks. So why don't you get that knife out. Go ahead and stand up and get, get your, the knife. There you go. Go ahead and let me just show you really quick how I do feather sticks. 
the theory of the feather stick is that you're creating a bunch of surface area and stuff like that. You're making small little little sticks. But what you want to do is every time you make a cut, now you're on a flat section. If you turn it just a little bit and carve the angles off of the stick, okay, that one went a little a little deep. And you try to make little tiny small curls. And right now for us, we can get this bark up from here too. This bark's kind of in our way. But for um, for this exercise, having the curls left on the stick is not important. We actually want the curls to be off of the stick, but you can practice, you can, um, sometimes it takes a little bit of work, but you can practice getting those curls, okay? Mm -hmm. And it helps if your knife point is down a little bit and you, you push it forward rather than going It'll work if you just go straight down, but it, it works a little bit better if you go sideways. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm all I'm cutting. And then when you get too many curls in your way, you can cut them off. I'm going to go get a container or something that we can store these curls in because the wind's blowing so much. Okay? okay. So I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Now one thing, um, here, let me get this tin. Mm-hmm. We'll put, the tin's empty, but anyway, we'll put, yeah, I'm going to reach in there real quick. We'll put your feathers in there. And one thing that I know that it seems like when you put your thumb, go ahead and get started on it. When you put your thumb on the spine of the knife, it seems like that's better for you, but actually it's better to have a fist grip on it. There you go. And a lot of time, there you go. Yep, and it's just, you're just taking little tiny fine slivers off. Yep. And then, if you get too much of a flat area, like I was talking about, you can flip the stick over. That's a nice one. See how that one worked? Mm -hmm. That's perfect. There you go. I'm going to let you, I'm going to grab this curl, and I'm going to let you work on that for a while, and you just keep doing it. And see, yeah, now you're going to get a good curl off of that one, because it's an edge. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Right in the basket. <laughs> there you go. All right, just need to make a bunch more of those. Try to make your curls as long as you can. Try to practice making them. Yeah, just keep the knife going all the way through the piece of wood. Yep, you just, it takes a while to, I'm not very good at it myself. <laughs> there you go, just like that. Just even steady pressure. That's a nice one, like just like that. There you go. So what do you think about this, Cassidy? It kind of takes a while to do this, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not as easy as you make it look. Some people can do it really good. I just kind of see now that's a really nice one. That's perfect. Did you see how, you know, feel how that felt? Yeah. 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 There's no rush. That's for sure. It's just taking your time and getting out here and practicing. And I wanted to do it in the outside here instead of in the garage. But if we were doing this for real out in the woods or something, you'd definitely want to tuck up out of the wind so that all your stuff wouldn't go flying.
Yep, you're doing a good job. It just takes a while. There you go. Nice curl. That was okay. That's a good one. There you go. All right, I'll get back with you. Okay, we're going to try a little different technique this time. I showed her a little a way that you can use the, the belly of the blade, the tip. Start right at the very... You're doing good, just like that. There you go. There you go. Start at the very tip. There you go. And then just cut. There you go. You're doing good. There you go. See how you pushed on through that piece? That was good. Nice one. That one. That method works a little better for you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It seems like it goes smoother. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Now leave that one. Okay. You can leave them on the stick or whatever and, and keep going. Try, practice keeping them on the stick. Okay. Instead of cutting it off that, like you did. That's okay. That's okay. It's just when you're cutting on it, you're just trying different methods and just practice and stuff. That's what the, that's the object of this whole one stick fire deal is to practice and to just totally hone your skills. See that? That's a beautiful curl. It's not necessarily right or wrong to keep it on the stick. It's just depends on your purpose. Depends on what you're doing. Nice. Nice. There you go. Keep going through it. Nice. Good job. There you go. Keep turning and getting your angles. There you go. Nice. Nice job. Look at that. Keep going on that on that edge you were doing just a second ago. Yep. This one? Yep. And tip your there you go. Because now you got an angle. Look, see that nice curl? Nice one. There you go. You're getting the hang of that pretty good now. Get a bunch of those together and uh, we'll be able to have a fire in no time, that's for sure. There you go. So now that you've practiced keeping it on the stick, it's you know it's totally up to you what you want to do. If you want to cut them off or break, you know whatever you want to do, or if you want to keep working on it, just don't you know you do what you want. Okay. But that's uh, I think I was saying this earlier. That's kind of the purpose of this um, whole one stick fire thing. It's not to, it's not to you know race or be super fast, although that can be fun too. But it's to totally hone your skills and to and to remember what it takes to make a fire, you know, how careful and everything you need to be. How you need to make some small shavings and, and, and it helps with your fine carving work. It just helps with a lot of stuff. Helps you test your knife to see what kind of edge you have on it. Just, there's a lot that goes into this one stick fire challenge for sure. While Cassidy's working on her method, I'm going to try this method here. I'm not very 
versed in this method, but I thought I'd give it a try. kind of limited myself on the size of the stick I have here. I didn't harvest a very, very large one. definitely a different way of doing it. It fatigues my wrist more, but I'm probably not doing it right. But still, it's it's basically just brace your hand and you know, pull the pull the knife back. They say this technique's better if you're like in a campfire or not campfire, but camp setting. Maybe you got little kids running around. Well, I don't think I'd be doing this if I had little kids running around, but anyway, you have maybe some other people around next to you and you can't you don't want to have a chance of anybody getting in the ring of death around you or whatever. Anyway, all right, let's check on Cassidy, see how she's doing. So you're on a new stick, Cassidy? I am. All right. You're totally doing a good job, totally goes straight down. Now you're in a different um, setting, you're sitting down. So you totally want to do like, I mean, you're totally being good and safe and just want to point out that she would want to make sure and and go straight down with the knife just like she is. Um, that's why it's kind of better to have a good firm grip, you know, not a death grip, but a good firm grip on your knife and you're, and you're carving, you, the mechanics is straight back and straight down. That way you're not slicing too much and then accidentally slip and cut your knee or your leg or something like that. So just like what you're doing, perfect. Those curls, you're starting to get them a little bit longer and uh, you're doing you're doing a lot better. You notice the difference between like when you first started? Oh yeah. 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 It's still really difficult, but yeah. I think I'm getting better. Yeah, you are. That's a nice one. Keep going like that. Good job. Okay, so not everybody agrees with batoning and stuff like that, but with this fine work with a soft piece of wood. I see no reason why she can't baton this and make the, the, the piece of wood was too big for her to make good feathers from. So she's going to try and cut it down a little bit. So go ahead and just tap, tap that in there. Hit it good. Now beat the tip of the blade. There you go. Just keep going easy like that. Push down with your hand. There you go. Just keep going easy. To me, and my way, way of thinking, I know that they're tempered differently, but an axe is just a different shaped knife. And if you can beat an axe like that, 
for the most part, within reason, you should be able to beat a knife like that. Now, like I said, I know they're tempered differently and stuff like that, but if you're careful with it, you sh it should have the same properties as an axe. You, should, you, don't, you shouldn't have to baby your knife. Anyway, good job, Cass. Pretty good one, Cass. Nice job. <laughs> nice job. Thanks. Okay, that's the amount of shaving she's got so far. How long do you think you've been at it so far, Cass? Half an hour? Yeah, maybe? almost half hour. It takes a long time to do it correctly, though. A lot of people try to rush this. A lot of people try to rush it and just start making all sorts of shavings that aren't going to work. You're taking your time, and I can almost guarantee you when we start to ignite this, it's going to work. So we'll do the method of ignition at the end. It'll be a secret till the end. <laughs> all right, we'll get back to it. All right, nice preparation, a lot of shavings there. Now what I want you to do, kiddo, is I want you to process down the last little bit of your stick so that we can, it's not gonna be a sustainable fire, we're not worried about that, but I want, just, I want more than just the shavings to go up. So let's process that stick down a little bit. There you go. Is that easier for you, kind of less wrapping around it? Yeah. There you go. Nice one. I'll show you another trick too that I use once in a while. So put the knife blade right there. Like that? Yep. And let's go sideways like we were talking about before. Lift your knife up. Turn your knife blade. There you go. I beat the hell out of it right there. Right here? Hard. Yep. Again. There you go. That's good. Now just uh, take take your knife completely off of the stick and you know set it down or whatever. So that, there you go. Now pull that piece of stick. Apart. There you go. That's what I do sometimes. Okay. There you go. Just like that. There you go. Okay, we're going to process some of those down and we're almost ready. Okay guys, she's ready and she is going to use flint and steel and with all natural materials. That little pile of brown stuff in the middle there is chaga. So if she can get a spark in that, that's really going to help. That'll keep a coal going and hopefully she can manipulate that, those shavings into a tinder bundle and kind of blow that into flame. And we had to really tuck up out of the wind to get the sparks to go. All right, I'm going to back up and let her go. Okay, give it a shot. Aim your, aim, there you go. Move your flint striker over this way a tiny bit. There you go. Okay, you're not getting any sparks, so let's try a new spot on your flint. That'll work. There you go. Okay, you're not getting any sparks, so then that means something's going on. If you're not getting sparks right away, then something's going on. There, you got a cold. Just easy. No, it's alright. Just let it go. I mean, let it, let it develop. You can blow on it just a tiny bit. Let's let's make sure that the chaga catches before you do anything. Go ahead and blow on it, but let's make sure the chaga catches before you do anything. Okay. 
Let me see what it looks like. Yep, keep going on it very gently. There you go, keep going on it, give it oxygen. Push some of that other dust, get that one piece of wood chip out of the way. Yep, gently. Alright, leave it alone. Push some of that other chaga on top of it. Easy though. Yep, get that piece over there. That's alright, now blow on it. Keep going. Now I want you to take that other piece of... Oh, you're doing good. Alright, squish it together a little bit and tilt, your, and tilt it to the side. Now, if you're going to tilt it that way, get your head over here and blow that way. Your uphill hand is going to get hot. So just so you know, keep blowing. Just keep blowing. Can you hold it together a tiny bit and rotate it? Rotate it a little bit. This hand's going to get super hot, so just keep aware of that. You can lift it up with a stick if you need to. Turn your head away to breathe in. <coughs> Doesn't help you got a cold. It's okay. You use the stick and get it up out of the way. There you go. Now blow on it. Turn your head way away. There you go. Just long, easy breaths. Get your face back a little bit. You're really close. One more good breath. All right, get out of the way, it's going to get on fire. All right, now go to this, get out of the smoke, get away from the wind, and blow on it this way. See how the wind's helping you? Yep, yep. <clears throat> there you go. Dump it out of the tin and get your Sorry. sticks to work. There you go, just dump it. There you go. There you go. Get them little tiny sticks on there. Now we should have had a base for our fire, but we were just mostly concerned with flame. Get in there and blow on it. There you go. Blow on it some more. Well, that grass is really putting it out. You did good. It was my fault because I had to make it on the grass here, but I was worried about the um, wind. Well, I was worried about the wind. Good job. And you just put this, you know. Now it's just a matter of manipulating it. If we would have had more smalls and stuff like that, it would have. Don't, don't, yeah. You want to make sure it's got plenty of, of oxygen. But it's going to. It would keep going. We just would need to work on it a little bit more. Here, let's just do this for a second. Doesn't help you got a cold, does it? Oh, no, it hurt really bad <laughs> breathing in that smoke. Oh, no. Like I said, we put it on this wet grass and that's what's, that's what's killing you. We could have left it on this on this plate, but I wanted to try to get it on the ground. So, congratulations! <laughs> get a one stick fire with flint and steel and all natural materials. That's great. Good job, Cassidy. Thanks. <laughs> oh.